Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is The Wave, your weekly show on all things money. On this show, we get to dissect topic related to personal, family and business finances. I'm your host, Miss KK, and it's always a pleasure to have you. If you are new here, thank you very much for stopping by. Please consider clicking the subscription button in the comment below. And if you are already a subscriber, thank you so much. Your continued support and interaction in the comment is highly appreciated. So um, let's get right into this in today's topic, which is really exciting. The things you need to consider before you buying your first car or before you consider buying your next car, right? I know cars are a, a, a very convenient thing to have and it can be a very exciting decision to take, especially not only deciding whether you should buy a car, but more so what type of car you should buy. So I'm going to be uh, going over certain factors that you need to consider in reaching the conclusion of which type of car to buy. And some of the things that a lot of people consider that shouldn't really, from a financial discipline perspective, shouldn't even matter when buying your first car or your next car for that matter, okay? So just to give a bit of background around myself, um, I bought my first car when I was maybe into my third third year of working. So I've worked for two years before having a car. Then I bought a second hand car in my second year of third year of working uh, that I bought cash with the savings I've had for the last for the first two years. The savings that I had wasn't necessarily meant for the car. I had to cancel a long term saving. To be able to buy that car which wasn't really a smart choice because when i made the, the saving i was having a 10-year goal and because i really needed a car because of the nature of the job that i was doing at the time that required a lot of traveling and flexibility i ended up having to cancel that saving so that i can get the money that i saved so far to buy a car i think i ended up losing around about five thousand in cancellation fee because i was breaching the terms of contract of the contract but that's a separate discussion that we have another day so that's where i stand since then i don't have a car as i've mentioned in my previous video i just get dropped at work by my husband or i drive with a rental car if i need to go somewhere basically that's around my decision my perspective of or my history around cars okay so really what should you be considering now if you are thinking there you've gotten your job deciding your or deciding on your car or you've saved up a deposit and you're deciding on it's time to get a car what should you be consider so the first thing what should you be considering the first thing that you should be considering is what do you want to do with that car what is the purpose of that car are you simply going to use that car to get you from point a to point b are you in that in, in in maybe you work in town and you just need it for um commuting between home and work or do you perhaps need it for other things such as you need maybe to be racing if you are sport fanatics or perhaps do you need it to uh, save you uh, when you are in town and when you go to the uh, to the village, for example, or to the farm? So for a lot of people that live in northern Namibia, or not even northern Namibia, some people live in an Africa in a African setting where there's a lot of soft sand and it requires certain types of cars such as four by four, and you know if you buy a small car and if you want to go home that car won't be able to get you home so you need to look to look really what do i want to do with a car and what are the circumstances in which you, you want to um, buy that car you also need to to uh, look at whether you are buying the car for personal purposes or you are buying it for business purposes or you are buying it for a family purpose let's take a typical example of a single lady that um, lives in town doesn't need to go to the village or drive anywhere that requires four by four doesn't have a child so for that lady a simple car even a small young Japan car might be ideal for that person because for them it will fit all they need to do with that car and occasionally when they need to take short trips Although even long trips, they were um, uh, that car would take them everywhere they want to go for as long as it's on road and not it's not off road. Then you have maybe consider a person, a young family that have kids that needs to fit in those you know babysitters in the back and need to pack a lot of luggage in the in the in the boot. So for that type of family, maybe a young Japan car or a very small Polo might be ideal for them because of the nature in which they are. Or if you are maybe uh, doing business, for example, my brother, he does welding and he needs to do a lot of out of town job, number one, and he needs to do a lot of out of workshop job, number two. So to get to his client, he needs a car that will accommodate all his clients, whether it's in a rural setting or an urban setting, plus he needs a car that is strong enough to carry his metal. So for him, a 4x4 bucket would definitely work, even a pickup truck, a small pickup truck would even be ideal. So you really need to consider what do I want to do with this car? Number two, how much can you afford 
and how are you going to finance that car so now it's all good and well to, to think i need this car i need the car that has the best speed because i'll be driving a lot or i'll be doing racing a lot or i need a car that can take both four by four and off road and you know on road and you know it's all good and well to decide that but now the second decision is how much can you afford and how are you going to finance this car going back to the, my example i was an article clerk i didn't earn that much um i yes i could potentially qualify for a loan at the bank um that will fit a specific car but the installment from the bank's perspective would have been a bit unaffordable for me so buying a brand new car with the bank for me at that time was out of question so you need you need to look at yourself am i going to be able to afford a bank installment if so how much am i going to be able to afford initially and also do i have the required deposit to put up to be able to get that car if i'm getting it with a bank the thing is with a lot of people the bank has a lot of products that obviously help people that are struggling or that can't really afford the type of car that they want so that's why you have these things of bal bal um, bal uh, balloon payment zero deposit things like that that is just there to sort of try and help people that can afford to service the debt but may not necessarily be able to afford the deposit so those are the consideration it it's good to know what type of car you want but it's also good to know how much you qualify for if you are buying it with a bank or how much you have saved if you want to buy cash so that's the second consideration the third consideration is you need to look at how what are the subsequent costs of having that car so for a lot of us when we think about a car we think it's the installment that you are paying and the fuel to get you to work and maybe insurance but you also need to look at things like maintenance cost and fuel efficiency so the maintenance cost really if it's a brand new car it's not really a problem because your car is likely to be under warranty manufacturing warranty and a maintenance plan for maybe 60,000 kilometers or four years i don't know what the standard terms are so if, if you are buying a brand new car those are the last of your worries but if you are buying a second hand car those things come immediately on you because the the car is already off warranty and it's already off maintenance plan so you need to be able to you know um uh, have enough room in your budget to cater for ad hoc maintenance routine maintenance and and sometimes routine breakdown because secondhand cars are also prone to breaking especially if it was not well taken care by the previous owner and obviously things like um replacing tires those things come at a cost so you need to be able to be able to see am i Am I going to be able to afford this car? Personally, my first second, my first car was a second hand. It was a second hand Jeep, and Jeep in itself it's an expensive brand. So a small part would cost quite a lot, and also the tires for the Jeeps were expensive. So it's not something that I necessarily considered when I was buying a car, but it was ideal because it was four by four and it was it drives nicely, and you know the tires were. Uh, but higher i didn't care about bumping things because i know i wasn't going to bump anything so basically those are some of the considerations that you need to know then um you also need to look at fuel efficiency right a lot of cars actually not a lot of cars different brands have different fuel efficiency let me just give a typical example when we went on honeymoon we uh, rented a polo and that polo was fuel efficient i don't know what type of polo it is i'm so bad with car names but that fuel was that polo was fuel efficient we drove it for like from from devundu to to hurtfontein on half tank similarly compare that we 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 drove um, a toyota starlet from here from wavish bay to um we rented another car for a small vacation but we went to terrace bay and that car we drove it from the wavish bay airport to Terrace Bay, 20 kilometers before Terrace Bay, that car, when the, 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 the fuel tank went on, we are about to run out of fuel in the middle of nowhere. Same thing happened when we came back. We filled it up in Terrace Bay, 20 kilos before Swakop Moon, before we could even reach Wamish Bay, then, then, then we're out of, out of petrol. So you need to look at, you know, how is the uh, fuel efficiency of the car and are you going to be doing long distances or are you going to be mainly doing short distances obviously if your car is fuel efficient your budget your fuel cost is also going to be low but if your car is um is not fuel efficient you're going to probably be filling up a lot more if you are doing long distance travel so those are all the things that you need to consider and how do you really find out about fuel efficiency you need to check to people that own the car because it's those people that knows the struggle and it's those people that knows the ups and downs of that car so if you want to buy maybe a range lover see if you have a friend or someone in your circle that owns a range lover and ask them 
how is the maintenance of this car you know um are parts expensive how is the fuel efficiency of this car how much is insurance on the car but insurance really depends on other things just because someone else got a cheaper insurance doesn't mean you're going to get a cheaper insurance because there's so many things to consider such as the age of your license your accident history the value of the car the color of the car the model of the car so there's a whole bunch of things that goes into it okay so that is now really um a subsequent cost that comes to the car and the other thing that you need to consider i think which is so important is how long do you intend to keep the car and how, what is the resale value of the brand that you're buying so for a lot of people generally this is the last thing that you are thinking about when you're buying a car you're so excited you're finally getting your four wheels and you can be able to drive yourself and travel the whole world because you think when you have a car you can travel but really it's also other things that you need to consider we don't even think how long we want to keep this how long we want to keep this car and how much we'll be able to sell it certain brand have very strong resale value even if the car has a lot of mileage you are likely to find a, a customer easily either you're gonna sell it back to the dealer that that bought that you bought it from or you will easily just find a buyer through a private sale some other brands are very difficult i know of a friend of mine that had a master demio and she really struggled to sell, to sell her car when she wanted to re relocate overseas and she ended up selling it at a loss to just settle what she had at the bank. So you need to consider really, um, if I were to sell the, this car, will I, number one, be able to recover the money that I still owe the bank at that time? Or will I at least be able to get some portion that will give me a deposit for my next car? And how easily will it be to buy it at a uh, uh, to how easy how easy it will be for me to sell it you for you to be able to do that ready you can go on facebook and see which type of cars are people buying especially in the second hand you know uh, market pages on facebook if people are selling a lot of certain cars and people are commenting and buying those certain cars then you know there's a, a market and a result value for that particular brand and um so basically that's what i wanted to talk about so mainly is what you want to do the car what you want to do with the car how much you can afford and how you're going to finance the car subsequent costs of having that car and how long you want to keep it and then uh what is the result value of that car what you shouldn't be considering which a lot of people do right is what is the status of the car that you're driving believe me i three or four years ago when i bought that jeep i could have bought a polo right our house in the village doesn't have soft sand and a polo can reach there. I could even bought the spark to begin with, the ones that I use for driving school. But why didn't I buy it? Because I was I was under this thing, no, I don't want a polo, polo so, so ugly, blah, 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 blah. So, and it's also the expectation, the status of what type of car you drive. And I see a lot of people going for extremely expensive cars just to show off and they don't even aren't making the best use of the car. I'm not saying don't go and buy a luxury car by all means if you can afford it and that's what you want, go for it. But don't break your budget because of the status of the type of the car that you drive. Polos are extremely fine if that is what you want for and that's what you want and can afford at that time. And also don't go for a particular car because of speed believe you me you are gonna crash with that car if you are not a race driver and it's not gonna end well so and most of the time you're not even gonna keep that car if you're for long if you are like speeding if speeding is your thing obviously if you are racing by all means go for a car that has the ideal speed um if you are going to be maybe driving long distances you can go for a car that that has the speed that you want but you do remember the speed limit on each road is 120 and really beyond that you are risking your life so don't go for a car simply because of its speed and lastly don't go for the car because of the expectation from families and friends look i know a lot especially with uh, uh, black parents they put so much pressure on people simply because of the work that you do when I was getting married, my mother wanted me to buy a, car, a baki. And I was thinking, mom, that is practically impossible because home girl is trying to save for a wedding. Home girl is trying to save for, you know, savings for next year when she's finally married. Home girl still needs money to go for honeymoon. Now home girl must buy a baki. And you know how much bakis are there. Ridiculously expensive. But for my mother, she was thinking it from a practicality perspective to say there's no baki at home. A wedding requires a lot of people to be moving up and down. Who is going to do that? But luckily, my brother came through for me. He was just buying a baki because he needed the baki for his business. And he said, Carol, you don't have to buy a baki. And I was super excited. So... Parents' expectation and parents' pressure can put us in corners and we might be able to do things 
just simply to please them, not necessarily because it helps us. So what I'm trying to say is buy what's in your budget, buy what you need, buy what you can afford, buy what you can maintain, and not what's expected of you and not what society status is placing on you and not because the car is has good speed. So basically those are some of the considerations that you should um that you should consider when buying your first car or buying your next car or upgrading your car so thank you very much for uh giving us this time to spend together kindly you please subscribe if you haven't done so Sh share the videos with friends and family and as usual please sanitize and stay safe